In this video, I will show you how we can use group study as a tool to complete difficult topics, revise and fight procrastination. I will also tell you how you can effectively make a group that studies together rather than waste time gossiping about friends. If you already study in a group, you will learn to make it more useful and if you don't, you will learn its advantages. So without further ado, gather your group and let's get on with it. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Abbas Ali, a full-time orthopedic surgeon and national level faculty of orthopedics and a part-time YouTuber. So the first thing, what is group study? Because for a very long time, I had a friend who used to think group study means sitting in a library and reading alone. That's not group study, that's studying alone in a room full of people. Although it helps you study well because you have someone sitting across the room also studying, but that's not what we are talking about today. We are talking about group study. Group study is when people study together, sitting in a group, discuss with each other, solve each other's problems, teach each other and all of this helps them in the process of learning. So historically, group study is when you gather a bunch of your friends at your home or someplace to read for an exam. You usually start out very enthusiastically, planning and charting out what to do and when to do. Things start out very productively, you cover a lot of content at a very fast pace, your faith in your group is established, you feel happy about it. But eventually, there is always this one fellow in the group who starts to feel hungry. And so you guys start taking frequent breaks. Another one has a small bladder, so a few more breaks. You start going to the tea stall together and those harmless little chit chats on the way transform into complex geopolitical discussions that require tiring debates. You start making fun of other friends or get into the never-ending gossip of your class. And before you notice, your days are getting wasted and you find no advantage in group study. You dissolve the group and go back to your own individual study plans. Has this happened to you too? Hit the like button if this has happened to you and share this video with that one hungry friend. In this video, I want to fix all of that. So the first thing is, why group study? See, we all agree that self-study is definitely the best form of study. It allows you to draw your own concepts as you explore the subject on your own like an adventure. But it is time consuming, tedious and boring. And when we are left to ourselves, we have a knack of finding ways to procrastinate. Group studies help students learn quicker and better because you're surrounded by your friends. You can always turn to them for insight of the topic and timely motivation to kill that boredom. So the purpose of group study is two. Number one, knowledge gain and number two, motivation. So what is the knowledge gain? Group study gives you the opportunity to hear information from others, gives you their perspective and when you participate and teach a topic to someone, it lasts longer in your memory and also clears your own doubts. Studies have shown that students who participate in group studies have developed deeper and broader understanding of the subject. Tell me if you have observed this, when you explain some concept to a friend, you tend to remember it better compared to the things you have studied alone, isn't it? Number two, motivation. You develop a sense of healthy competition which motivates you to put in that extra effort. You have strong accountability and routine. The group forces you to follow the routine. If one person deviates from it, others will make sure you stick to it. And most importantly, group study gives us the confidence that agar main fail hota hon, so ye sab mere saath fail honge. Now when to study in a group? Group study works well in two circumstances, when you have ample time for the exam or when you have no time at all. See when you have ample time, you can discuss various views, argue, evaluate various books, choose your own author and experiment to find what works best for you. It is also useful at the last minute where you don't have enough time to go through all the syllabus. So you can strategically cover a lot of syllabus by allotting certain topics to certain people and teach each other what you have read, thereby getting more done faster. I personally prefer doing a group study after I have done at least half of my planned syllabus myself. This ensures that I stay in the loop of discussion without feeling frustrated and depressed. Most of the times when you get into a group discussion without coming prepared, you end up getting jealous and angry with everyone and that is a very bad place to be in. Now how to form a group? A group should be chosen very wisely. 
If you study with all of your best friends, there is a high possibility that you will have lots of fun but no studying. So try to find other people. Also the individuals you have in the group have an amplification effect on others. Their thoughts and fears get exaggerated. For example, if you have an extreme pessimist in your group who is always worried about exam and failure, then you will all start worrying about the exam and the consequences of failure rather than studying. So try to select a diverse and less dramatic group. Group size is also important. Small groups of maximum 3 to 4 people should be just about right because beyond that you are not making a group to study, you are making a parliament and we all know how productive that can be. What about choosing the right partners? Here there is something known as the 33% rule of Jacqueline Rosales. She says that you should surround yourself with 33% people who you can learn from. 33% people who are just like you and 33% people you can teach. This is the best combination for a successful group. This helps you learn from someone and teach others. Always study in a group of students who are sincere in purpose. See, intelligence should not be the only criteria to decide who joins the group. In fact, hardworking and committed members are more useful than intelligent people in your group. Now, how should a group function? Have a group leader, they don't necessarily have to wear a badge but have someone who is committed and punctual among you to lead you. They have the authority of moderating the group and guiding the study plan and all of you should follow them. Divide the syllabus that needs to be covered amongst everyone. Everyone should read their allocated part and prepare a summary including the gist of most important concepts and if necessary prepare notes that can easily be photocopied. This way, you are not only getting a quick review of the topic but the person preparing is learning through teaching others and that stays with you for a very long time. There may be members in your group who have great command on certain topics. For example, someone knows biochemistry very well and other is good at anatomy. Assign according to their strengths. When everyone discuss the concepts that they are good at, all the group study partners will benefit from it. Make sure that the workload is equally divided among members. Everyone needs to benefit from group study. If you exploit someone, they will not stay long. Your group should have robust policing systems. It should be firm. There should be strict time limits for topics and punishment systems for people found wasting time of others or discussing unnecessary things. This may sound harsh, but you need this. Trust me, if you are a little strict about this, everyone will benefit from it. No class gossip or unnecessary discussions in the group time. Punishments can range from buying everyone dinner to getting banned from the study group itself. You can also use the same Pomodoro technique that I talked about in a group. Ask everyone to focus for a certain time and then you can take a short break together. Now what are some of the problems in group study? Dependency issues. You should not totally depend on your partner or group to study so much so that you do not read anything on your own. This is not good because life is unpredictable, things can happen, people fall sick, they get busy, they can leave and you should not be left in a vacuum. So have a habit of reading on your own too. Another problem is false confidence of studying in a group. Since you are in a group, you sometimes feel overconfident about your knowledge. You need to understand you have to work on your own as well to fix your weak areas. Group will not do everything for you because you write the exam all alone. If you are a slow learner, studying in a group can be frustrating and sometimes demotivating. So you should always come prepared. Also, beware of confident bluffers. These are the people who bluff with so much confidence that everyone in the group is blackmailed into believing that they are correct. Best is to go back and check on your own rather than arguing with them. And very importantly, the three idiots logic. Because we study in a group, we sometimes feel that we all are equal and we should get a similar score. But that usually doesn't happen. So like in Three Idiots, Farhan Khureshi says, Dost fail ho jaye, to dukh hota hai. Lekin dost first a jaye, to zyada dukh hota hai. You shouldn't feel jealous about the partner who got a better score. Instead, try to learn what they did extra to get that score. Learn from them. Grow with them. Now what are my suggestions? See, for subjects which require understanding and have some conceptual information, I suggest you do self-study first and group study later. Because when you are learning a new topic on your own, you struggle by yourself to understand the concepts and explore more. This builds valuable connections between various topics in your mind. 
and once you have a basic idea of the topic you can review it in a group this will not only open up new perspectives but also helps you recall and fill the gaps in your memory now if it is a factual subject with lots of rote memorization which confuses or bores you have a quick read yourself and then jump into group study this helps because memorization exercises work well in groups sometimes you have creative friends who make nice memory tags in form of stories or mnemonics or even songs that help you remember facts painlessly i found group study very handy in particular when preparing for practical exams i can actually recall instances in my exam especially during viva where our discussion proved to be very helpful in answering the questions see no study technique is better than another it's just that some things can be studied alone and some with a group group study is a tool which you can use to make things easy and if it doesn't work for you there is no need for it but if you ever decide to use it now you know how to go about it properly remember learning is a serious business but who says it can't be fun if you have ever attended my classes you would know what i'm talking about now tell me the following things in the comment box below how many members are there in your group are you a solo reader or a group reader who is your friend who is always hungry let them know who they are smash the thumbs up button and share this video with your group of friends subscribe to the channel and don't forget to click the bell icon if you want to be notified when i upload my next video i will see you in the next one till then take care bye bye